We all know low end can make your track sound full and warm or an absolute muddy mess. Find out one of the biggest low end offenders next on Music Surgery with me, Dr. Bob. Hey you guys, quickly before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And don't forget to check out the Doctor's Lounge, my store, and the links to some great samples below in the description of this video. So, sometimes it's a plug-in or a series of plug-ins and detailed balancing that makes your low end come to life. But even with all that carefully in place, you still got a train wreck if you don't get this right. Watch this. All right, you guys, again, great stuff this week. Uh, let me play you this and we'll talk about it and we'll fix the problems. Here's this. All right, so, so much of my life, I would watch videos or talk to mixers or producers or whatever and go, give me the answer. Uh, what's the plugin? Where do you have that setting at? I wanted to get to the point, so I wanted to, I wanted to like make mine sound like theirs, or I wanted to learn what they learned. But whatever plugin you have, whatever you're, you're doing, it's not going to work if you don't get the material right. So I've had to learn to slow myself down, watch and listen, and really look at problems before problems. Sometimes the problem you think you have is coming from somewhere else. This is a very common one in low end where you have a piano or a low guitar, baritone guitar, detuned guitar, and a bass and you're getting discrepancies in notes. And no matter what kind of plug-in you put on things, you're going to have rubs. And there's several ways to uh, fix this. And let me show you. Now, I have everything I'm showing you now is, is just in MIDI form. But many, many times I've gotten tracks where things aren't MIDI. There's a real piano player, real bass player. And I've asked the client, hey, look. There's some notes that rub here in these bars. Would you mind replaying the bass? Or would you mind replaying the low guitar so it matches better? And every time, they're happy to do it because they know how much you care about the project, that you want it to make sound good. But there's several ways to do this. And let me show you. This is kind of an arrangement thing at first, and then I'll get into plugins. So uh, let me just go with the piano and the bass. Now this bass is a great bass. It's the easy bass. This is a very Beatles sounding song. So I've got the uh, 60s bass. This is like the Paul McCartney Hofner. And I've also got easy keys. This is the upright piano. Um, so I'll leave links below to those if you want to look at those or buy them. Easy, um, the tune track stuff makes the tune tracks makes incredible stuff. Okay, let me get to this. So, let's listen to just this without the drums. Okay, now, even though these notes in the bass work against these keyboard notes... Ba -da 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 -da. Let me see if I get more clarity if I move these up an octave. Okay, so now let's listen to this bar. Immediately. Same notes, same lick, but I... Raise it an octave to get out of the way of the low note of the piano because the piano is just 
on this note, an octave below, which is an F sharp. So, raising those notes up an octave gets it out of the way. Let me put it back to where it was. And you can hear that lick much more in that register, in that octave. Let's keep going. Okay, now we kind of have a discrepancy in notes. Even though this is a cool bass part, all works, and the piano part works great, but if I can change these notes to something that's not such a rub, Okay, because right now I have this. So if I were to, this is, this is, <laughs> this represent what the, pian the low note and the piano is playing. And here's my lick on bass. Not good. So I want to find a better note that goes with my low end of my piano. Let's try the, the note that the piano is playing. Immediately. So much easier. So if, if I'm gassing all this stuff up later with plugins and compression and all that, it's just going to make these airs sound louder and my there's going to be mud in my low end left-handed piano players we've got to find a way or detuned guitars or whatever we have to find a way where the bass and these notes sound good together here we have another one so we have we have a second playing, so that's what this sounds like. We have this against that, which is not good. So, the, the piano is playing Much better. We have another one weird one there. So we have we have these two notes playing against each other, this representing the piano. Not good. So let's move these notes to something that sounds better with the low end of the piano, the left hand of the piano. Let's try. Now we're getting up out of the way of the low note frequency wise. Let's see if that if these notes work. These notes sound funny now, but these work. We're in a different frequency range. We're in a different range on the piano away from the low note. Let's go to the note that the piano is playing there. Boom. And see if this works. Clean. A little bit funny here. I think this is the note the piano is playing. Much better. That's a bad one. So, we have this representing the low note of the piano and this our bass. Let's fix that.
we should probably go to the note that the piano is playing. Much better. Now these, let's see if we can use our octave trick. A little high. Let's try a different lick. Let's try this one. There we go. Finding different notes that work and that speak better against that low end. These are a little muddy down there next to the low end. What do we have? Let's see if they work an octave up. Now, much, much cleaner. And all it took is me listening with my ear <clears throat> to see where the problems were and fixing those. Now, what do I have on my bass? Probably not much. This is uh, an Ampeg amp that is one of the most popular bass amps, the B15. I'll leave a link below for that. And the trusty CLA-2A by Waves, I'll leave a link below for that. I've gotten criticism that I'm not showing as many pl uh, plugins in, in projects that I'm using. So now I'm going to show them and I'm going to show you where I bought them so you can uh, be hip to that. So this is with the plugin. And thanks for the criticism. I'll take anything I can do to make the channel better. Um, this is with the plugins on. This is without. So obviously some more gain, some nice compression, and a little bit of dirt here. But you'll find that you don't have to do a ton of surgery when you get the sound source right. So now let's listen to everything in context. Listen how nice that pops out, that lick right there, because it's an octave up away from the piano. Clear as a bell. And there you go. Now things are speaking better. They're out of the way. You can smash, destroy things any way you want. And the louder you make it and the, the more pumped up you make it, all of the notes are working together. Like I said at the beginning, you can still move notes around if they're not in MIDI. You can do it with Melodyne. You can do it with cutting notes out and pitching them. You can go back to the source, ask the producer or the artist, hey, would you mind replaying these measures? They're a little bit funny. You could even give them some suggestions. Um, but this is what's really going to clear up your low end and really make things a lot easier to mix. Well, there you go. These type of discrepancies will kill anything that's supposed to sound great. Take the time to listen what's going on in the low end before you start carving away on it. You may have problems that need addressed that no EQ, compression, or balancing can fix. Thanks as always for watching. Give me some comment love and a thumbs up below and hit me at drbobmusicsurgery at gmail.com if you want to say hello or you want me to work on your music. Take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you the next time the doctor's in.